So, a couple of days ago, Tom Scott released an interesting video about optimizing FISBUS for readability and maintainability. Um, and that kind of made me wonder, can we optimize FISBUS for performance? Not that you really need that, but I thought it might be fun. Okay, so what is FISBUS? FISBUS is a counting game. You simply count the numbers from 1 to 100, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Um, but instead of multiples of 3, you say FIS. So 1, 2, FIS. And at 6, you say FIS. At 9, you say FIS. At 12, you say FIS, and so on. And instead of multiples of 5, you say BUS. So 5 is a multiple of 5, uh, 10 is a multiple of 5. And if it's a multiple of both 3 and 5, so a multiple of 15, you say FISBUS. And uh, apparently this um, is not trivial uh, to solve um, in code. So here's one possible solution. Maybe let's step through it. Let's start the program. We initialize a counter to 1. Uh, we haven't uh, gone over 100 yet. So let's check whether 1 is a multiple of 15. It's not. Let's check whether it's a multiple of 3. It's not. And it's also not a multiple of 5. So we simply print the number 1. OK, and the same goes for the next number. So 2 is, is just an ordinary number. And then 3 is not a multiple of 15, but it is a multiple of 3. So we print this. OK. Then again, 4 is an ordinary number, not 15, 3, or 5. So we print it. And then 5 is um, not a multiple of 15, not a multiple of 3, but it's a multiple of 5. So we print bus, and so on. OK, so this is um, simple to understand, I think. So what's the first um, performance problem? The first performance problem is that in each iteration, we potentially divide i um, three times. The first time by 15, uh, then by 3, and uh, then by 5. But if we look at the sequence, maybe it's becoming a little more obvious if I add a line break here. Let's start the program at a high speed. So we get two complete lines, or we can go even faster. Okay, there we have two complete lines. Um, okay, that's visually not very appealing. Let's make it numbers of width two at um, minimum. Okay, that looks better. Okay, so um, if we check the the remainder, the the, the rest when dividing by fifteen. Uh, we can basically basically check where are we uh, in this uh, sequence. So the number 1 and the number 16 will give the exact same result of 1. 2 and 17 will give the same result of 2. Um, 3 and 18 will give 3 and so on. And you see that all the fizzes and the buzzes are aligned right next or, or right, right, right next to each other. Uh, one above the next. Or below the next. Okay, um, so simply by checking the rest when dividing by 15, we can determine do we have to print a fist bus, then we have no rest. When we have the rest um, 3, 6, 9, or 12, we print a fizz, and when the rest is 5 or 10, we print bus. So we only need um, this division, we don't really need these other divisions. Okay, so let's replace this if with a switch. Of course, we want to switch over the rest, not over the comparison. Okay, and then, then we say if the rest is zero, we print fizzbus. Okay, what are the other interesting cases? So fizz, we have a case 3, 6, 9, and 12. 3, 6, 9, and 12. Then we print fizz. Okay. And the other two cases where oh, I still have it in my clipboard, 5 and 10. Then we print bus and break. And then we have a default case. If it was neither of those special cases, we simply print the number and we break. The last break is not really necessary for the last case, but I still like to write it down for consistency. OK, um, right. Maybe let's do a simple test. Again, generating two lines. Oh, what did we forget? Is a colon. OK. Right, let's see. OK, the physics are 
in the correct place. The buzzes are in the correct place and the fizz buzzes as well. And the rest of the numbers looks, looks okay also. Okay, now um, what I like about this solution is first that we only divide once and not three times. And we can uh, rearrange the cases to match the problem statement better. So the problem statement is, well, you count the numbers from one to a hundred. So this is the normal case. We can simply put it first. You don't have to put the default case last in a switch statement. You can put it wherever you want, really. Um, then the multiples of three, we print fizz. Uh, the multiples of five, we print bus. And this is the last uh, very special case. So let's put it um, at the very bottom. And this should still work. Let's test it. Right. Yeah, looking good to me. I don't see any differences. Okay. Um, right. So what else could we do? This is uh, this is also already pretty pretty fast. <laughs> Only one division. Um, what I find interesting is when I see a loop, a loop that goes through a range of numbers, and then we switch over the loop index. This is an interesting pattern or maybe an interesting anti-pattern. Um, let me comment this out and show you a simpler example. So, so suppose I want to print uh, all the digits from one to nine and I want to print that th those are num the digits. Uh, let's say uh, is a digit uh, like this. Let's see if this works. Right, um, not looking very pretty. Uh, maybe let's just say, oh, is this, does this look better? Yes. Okay, let's, now let's suppose we want to change the output. I want to, I don't want to write digit. I want to write even or odd, depending uh, whether I is an even or an odd number. So I would like the output zero, even, one, odd, two, even three or four, even five odd, and so on. So of course the first instinct is let's write an, an if statement. If I is even, we say uh, even like this, and otherwise we say odd. Okay, let's see if it works. Okay, this does exactly what we want. But now if you step through this code, we notice an interesting behavior. So the first time we enter the loop body, we go to the, um, the first branch because we have an even number. Okay. And the next time we go to the second branch because we have an odd number. Okay. And the next time uh, we have an even number again. And the next time we have an odd number again. So we oscillate between the, those two cases. So it's not really, we don't, hmm, how can I express this? Um, it's a very uh, predictable pattern. <laughs> so um, let me generate the entire output again fast so I can talk about it. So um, we could think about the output in a different way. And instead of thinking about it as two, uh, I'm sorry, as 10 individual outputs, we could think about um, it being five outputs of even odd pairs, right? So I could write a for loop that runs five times and through each iteration, we write um, two numbers to the terminal. So let me simply increase i by two instead of by, uh, by one, then we only have five iterations and we simply throw away the checks and simply print both and then of course, I have to add one to this i, and uh, this should still work. Maybe let's step through it, it's new code. So i is zero, so we expect that uh, zero even and one odd, here we are. Then we increment i to two, so we expect the output two even and three odd. Then we increment to four, so we expect four even and five odd. So the output is exactly the same. We have, um, two printf statements executed per loop iteration, and we have no more if else, right? And I find this a lot simpler and potentially more performant because we don't need to check anything. Okay, so let's uh, maybe comment this one out in case we want to refer to it later. Let's remove the f 
first comment like this. Okay, um, so can we apply the same pattern here? So here we had two cases and we printed both cases uh, in one iteration of the loop. And here we have 15 cases. So why don't we simply print 15 cases? So uh, let's increment by 15. And um, here we had basically uh, i plus zero and i plus one. This was the even case. This was the odd case. Simple to see because zero is uh, even and one is odd. Um, I would like to have a similar pattern here where I have uh, i plus one, i plus two, i plus three, because uh, this, uh, I, then it's 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 easier to see which which cases need to be the fizzes and which need to need to be the buzzers. So let me start at zero, and let me remove this sign. Okay, um, so we want to remove remove the switch. Um, okay, so I want to start by printing i plus one, which is indeed a normal number. Let me remove this brace. Uh, did I remove too many braces? I think so. Let's see. Yeah, that's better. Um, okay, so that's the normal number one. Uh, that's the normal number two. And then we need a fist. Let me remove all those breaks and all the cases. We're not really in a, in a switch anymore. Okay, so we have a fizz. Then we have the number four. And then we have a buzz. And then we have another fizz because six is divisible by three. Then we have seven and eight, right? Seven and eight. Then we have another fizz because nine is a multiple of three. Then we have another buzz because 10 is a multiple of five. Um, then we have 11 and then we have another fist for the 12 and then we have 13 and 14 okay and then we have fist bus for the 15 case okay then let me remove this old code okay so let's maybe run this through in fast mode and see what the output is and start at the beginning. So the fizzes are at the right places, the buzzes are at the right places, the fizzes are at the right places. One plus 15 is 16, two plus 15 is 17. Yeah, that's already looking pretty good. But uh, if you look at the very bottom, we see that we have too much output. <laughs> so 97, 98, 99, 100. So these um, one, two, three, four, five, the last five printf statements, uh, should not have been executed. So one, two, three, four, five. So we, we really should have stopped here, right? Um, how do we solve this problem? Maybe we simply break out of the loop um, if we detect that we just handled the 100 case. So this is i plus seven, i plus eight, i plus nine, i plus 10. So if i plus 10 equals 100, we simply break or we could already also say i equals 90, right? That's, that's exactly the same. Let's see if this works. Yeah, now we stop at 100, 97, 98, 99, and 100. Uh, so then this loop condition is always false. We could, we could remove it. Um, but I don't, I don't really like this additional if here. So because here we have a conditional jump, here we have an unconditional jump back to the beginning of the loop, um, I would really, I don't want an, an additional jump inside um, my loop body. So basically, I, I want this printf statement to be the last statement inside the loop body. How can we achieve it? Um, well, we could simply move all these print statements down and adjust uh, the indices. So let's see. 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. So this would be minus 1, minus 2, minus 3, and minus 4. This may, may look a little dodgy. Just, just let's check that the, we get the terminating conditions all right. Let's see. Yeah, 97, 98, 99, 100. Okay. But now we, we simply shifted the problem from um, the end to the start. Let's see. Yeah, now we have some bogus numbers at the start. This this doesn't really make sense. Um, so right, so so we could say well only 
only execute these printf statements if this is not the first loop iteration, right? So we could say if i is greater than zero, then execute this whole block of code. Let's see. <laughs> then we have another if statement, not really optimal. Let's just check if we have the right output. Yes, but that's that's not really pretty. Um, right. So is there any way to say the first loop iteration shouldn't start at the top, but it should start here? Um, well, depending on your programming language, yes, there is a possibility. We simply add a label and we jump <laughs> straight um, over the in initialization of our loop variable down into the um, into line 14. This should immediately crash because we haven't initialized i in that case. Let's see. Um, oh, I didn't stop the program before. Oh, okay, so goto is, uh, doesn't cause the program to start, right? So you can see i is not initialized and we try to read from i and um, of course that doesn't work. Okay, so we have to move the initialization part up here and then then it should work. Let's see, um, i is initialized to zero, then the goto immediately jumps here. We execute the first printf statements. So one, two, fifth, four, bars, uh, right, this is all looks pretty good. Then we increment i by 15 and uh, we, we are not done yet and then we continue here. Okay, um, let's fast forward. This should work. Yeah, we stop at 100 and we start it um, at 1. So this is an interesting uh, problem. So um, we had to do this weird jump into the middle of the first iteration because a hundred is not divisible by 15, right? Um, so maybe someday you will have an interesting um, performance bottleneck where you have a very complicated loop and you want to unroll it, but um, maybe the number of loop iterations is a prime number or something and you simply can't unroll it um, in, in, in trivial or obvious ways. And this may be a potential solution, right? So uh, unroll it and then simply jump into the middle of the first iteration to make all the numbers match up. Okay, so don't use this, uh, <laughs> don't sprinkle gotos in your code in the hopes that you get better performance. This is really, really an edge case and I mostly did it just for fun in this video. Okay, I hope you also had fun and uh, see you next time.